All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. Uh, my name is Tibi Adewo, and we just finished our first conversation where we get with a better person in a thespian, and uh, we discuss how we can use drama therapy to uh, solve some kind of issues where we get emotionally, you know, mentally, and all those kind of things, and we need to invest in that aspect of life to see better, uh, you know, results. Well, we move on to our next conversation. I remember I said, I, tell him, I, said, I get one better guest will be motivational speaker. Yes, we're going to be discussing a lot about that. He named uh, Isaiah Sam Maga, a motivational speaker, and we like to, you know, tap into his uh, well of knowledge uh, regarding some things. Good morning, welcome to the show. Oh, <laughs> uh, Azubia, good morning, Nigeria, good morning. Correct, correct. It's, it's, it's good to have you with us, uh, and we appreciate the time that you've taken out to be with us on the show this morning. Uh, we know it's not easy. <laughs> so, as, as a culture, we always love. Yeah, we always like to ask our guests, uh, how are you, uh, honestly? Because we know there's a pandemic now, a lot of things have changed. How are you, honestly? <laughs> God is helping, Sha. Mm. It, it, it has not been easy, but we know things are going to get better. Mm. And we are, we, we are praying, we are hoping, we are believing, we are fighting. And uh, that, that's the only way forward. I like that. Hoping, believing, and fighting. But as it be like, some people say, eh, we are waiting for when the world will go back to normal. You feel, say, this world will ever go back to the way it be before? Well, um, in a way, it, the world is adjusting forward. I don't think the world is going back. Um, what, what we have now is the new normal. In mm. our, our churches, in our schools, football. Um, I mean, we never, we never had to tune in to a football match the way we are doing now. Yes. I mean, now even the the, yeah. the sound guys have to cue in sound from all the different computers into the stadium yes. just to get that sound. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are moving mm -hmm. forward in this new normal, mm. and uh, that that's the only way the world is adjusting. We are adjusting forward. That's let, let's just say that. <laughs> Interesting. Well, uh, like you said, the, the word adjusting is key because we need to adjust forward. Okay. So let's talk about uh, uh, why we're having this conversation. You you do spoken words, but you do it through rap. Yeah. Rap. True. Spoken words through rap. Yes. Okay. So we're going to be playing a video clip so people can understand what, what the kind of uh, spoken word you do. Then when we come back, we'll jump into the conversation proper. Let's watch this video. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I believe so, and I understand what you mean now. Uh, spoken word poetry with, by, you're putting in a rap package, all right? Rap package. I like that. That was quite uh, very, very, very educating. Now, let's even start Thank by, you, by uh, your, your, your art. Why spoken words in the first place? Then why rap, putting it in rap? and, you know, delivering it through rap. Why did you decide to choose that as uh, the medium of your art? Okay. Um, for me, growing up, uh, I'm, I'm a son of a, a pastor, an art bishop, art bishop Samamaga. But growing up as a young man, the culture of the youth, literally, um, I, 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 what would I say? I got soaked. I got involved in it, and I got swept off my feet. Hmm. And the only way I could literally hear sense was through rap. Um, if you go back to, to the evolution of rap music, it was how people were able to air out their views yes. to the government about things. Go back to NWA and all these other people coming up from the 80s mm -hmm. down to the early 90s. And I, I, I found God through rap. Mm. You, I, I grew up hearing preaching a billion times, and I've seen all manner of preachers. I've heard all kinds of messages, but I went deeper into that street life. And when I found God and I found my senses, I came back to myself. I had a new assignment, a new goal, a new vision. And my vision was to go back to the same streets where I came from and pull people out of there. And the only tool I had was rap because that's what we listen to. Mm -hmm. We never listen to R&B, we never listen to rock. We, when boys wanted to get violent, they soaked themselves in violent rap music. Mm -hmm. So how I, were able to, uh, how, how I was able to contribute to the streets was take the same beats and put sense in it. 
take mm. the same hardcore and put a message in it. So it's like a message in the music. It's, it's, it's like a medicine in a capsule. So it, 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 it has been the way I've been able to reach out to the streets and contribute my social corporate responsibility because I know there's boys like me, there's girls like me mm -hmm. who will only hear a message through rap and through spoken word. Interesting. I like the fact that you decided to take, use this medium because uh, there used to be a narrative or there's a narrative of rappers being violent mm -hmm. or there's always it's always about a competition always about trying to prove you're better yeah. than the next person that's what uh, the rap True. culture has uh, been it has its basis on but you're looking at bringing uh, a different side to it now and you know mm -hmm. speaking uh, um, reality talking about change talking about how you could be a better person speaking about social situations yeah. and this is mm -hmm. the way you've decided to push this forward now how has the 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 acceptance been because what we're used to Whoa. is the rap guns violence and things but now you're bringing mm. rap in a different way how has the uh, reception been so far well um the good thing about it is i've heard 97 percent of people tell me this is like a breath of fresh air mm. especially the parents I've heard a lot of parents say, my kids don't listen to this kind of music no more since nice. they started listening to you. Nice. Um, I've heard a lot of mothers say, I can proudly leave my son with his phone now that I know he's listening to rap that makes sense. Hmm. Before, we would try to force the kids to listen to this kind of music, yeah. and we would end up fighting with them and losing them. But now we know that there is a kind of rap in a, a format that makes sense, we're okay. So it's been widely accepted. Mm -hmm. And even when I look at the insights on how I promote my stuff on, online, mm -hmm. I see a lot of 65-year-olds vibing to this stuff, like 65 plus. Wow. There is a high population of acceptance in that community or in that generation. Yeah. Because... They're thinking of their kids who are now in their teenage years or their early 20s, yes. moving into their 30s. And now looking at their grandkids who are now in, I mean, we grew up on the drugs, like the cocaine and all of that stuff. Now, this generation after us are growing up on the pills. Hmm. So the grandparents are even more worried than our generation. We were, we were the X generation. Then the Y generation came after us. I don't even know what this generation is called because hmm. these guys just pop anything and swallow anything and get high on anything. I've seen purple smoke. I've seen blue, yellow, purple pills, all kinds of stuff. Now, the grandparents are worried, but when they find someone who can role model change hmm. and, and, and positivity, through music because at the moment when when you look at the industry rap the genre of rap is literally the strongest yeah no no pun intended to any other genre of music when i was coming up 2004 2005 if an r&b artist wanted to collaborate with a rap artist they would ask you are you crazy <laughs> why would you do that but now an r&b artist trying to do an album without a rap collaboration they will still ask you are you crazy are you crazy why aren't you doing that yeah <laughs> yeah like the influence of rap music in this generation is too strong mm -hmm. but if we have people who are simply putting positivity into spoken word i think we will have sensible people in this mm -hmm. generation because the listenership the followership is huge mm -hmm. but we don't have people who are speaking sense it's literally the opposite. They're speaking nonsense. And that's what we've been crying for. We've been crying for scent, sense, literally sense. And that if, 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 I, if I am not as popular as the other guys, but I'm contributing positivity to my generation, I'm cool with it. Wow. When I see a life that has been changed, wow. when I see a mind who has been transformed, for me, that's fulfillment. There's, there's, there's a lot more in fulfillment than in happiness. So a lot of these guys do music to find happiness. 
Mm. I do this music to find fulfillment in life's business that have been changed. I like that. I like that. Uh, you're speaking about happiness and fulfillment. Those are very strong points. Yeah, you do music to find happiness or you do it to find fulfillment. Now, you said something about uh, the kind of music or the kind of rappers we have out there and the content at which they, they, they chunk out in their music. Now, there's, there's also yep. a narrative that says that uh, the, 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 the cook only gives uh, the, the, the kind or the food that uh, the, the, the buyer wants. You would, you, would, you would give them what they want. Now, these, these rappers will tell you, uh, is what the society wants that I give them. They don't want to hear us uh, rap about uh, how the country needs to be great or how we as individuals need to be better people. They want to hear us rap about how we are mm -hmm. blowing money, how we're spending money, how it's easy to make money, and how it's easy to just live with exactly. money. So they would come out with that exactly. argument and say the society is pushing them to bring content like this out. So um, mm. what is your take on this? Because uh, now you have a different uh, <laughs> narrative you're pushing. So what's your take on yes. this? My take is this. A, um, a Chinese man who comes to Nigeria to open a re restaurant and say, because I'm in Nigeria as a Chinese man, let me cook a goosey soup. He's going to fail woefully at doing it. True. What a Chinese man would rather do is come to your country and open a Chinese restaurant, mm -hmm. and his food is going to be much more expensive than your goosey. True. true or false? True. Totally true. If you, if you, you as an artist listening to me, if you let the society dictate what you should put out, you will lose your originality. Now, watch this. All of a sudden, the pandemic comes out. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, these same artists that were making nonsense are now making songs about the pandemic. Yes. It's not because they couldn't make sensible songs before, but they're just being tossed by the wave. Oh, the fans want this, so I'm going to give them this. The fans want that, I'm going to give them that. Mm -hmm. They are unstable as water. Even the Bible says they won't excel. That's mm -hmm. why you see these guys, they're like one-hit wonders. They come up today, and tomorrow they're gone. I mean, bro, mm -hmm. we can literally pick up a Tupac song, Changes, yes. right? Yes. And it sounds like he wrote it yesterday. It's still relevant today. Mm -hmm. Like, when you look at the Black Lives Matter, yes. and all this stuff that's going on in the country, you, you would think Tupac literally wrote that song yesterday. How is it that 23 years ago, a song was written and is still relevant? It's timeless. Yes. Songs that make sense are timeless. Nonsense songs only last, they trend for like a week, and that's it, they're gone. Mm -hmm. So why will I have my legacy be based on what the fans want? No. It's what I give out that the fans will take. Hmm. Be yourself. Be that original. That's why there's six billion, or, or rather, there's eight billion of us. So, if we have me trying to sound like you because you're famous, yeah, then I'm just gonna be yeah. a version of you. True. Before I came back to Nigeria, it like in England, it, it was hard for for an up and coming artist to find a record deal back in the day, mm -hmm. like. If, if you, no pun intended, I'm not trying to diss nobody, but on this side of the world, when you listen to the radio mm -hmm. or the TV, mm -hmm. nine out of 10 songs don't make sense. And everybody watching me will understand this. Over there, nine out of 10 songs make sense. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to come out as an artist, as a rapper, the record labels would tell me we have Jay-Z, why do we need to? Yeah. If I'm trying to, as a singer, they'll tell me we have Beyonce. Why do we need you? So mm. I have to find my niche different from a Beyonce so that I can create a need in the industry that suits what I can give out. Mm. So please, if you are listening to me as an artist, as a writer, as a DJ, as a dancer, whoever you are, don't try to take your life based on what the society wants. Mm. If the society says we, we want porn, 
Are you going to start writing that because the society wants that? Hmm. Of course, evil thrives more than good. That's the reason why we will look back and complain. The government is this. The government is that. The government is this. But nine times out of ten, we listen to artists more than we listen to the government. Hmm. So if your artists are pushing you in the wrong direction, don't come and blame the government later. True or false? True. Totally. Totally. That's this 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 is this is quite interesting seeing it seeing it from from this perspective like you've said right now it sheds a whole new light to this conversation and uh unfortunately we would have to wrap this up quickly but uh i believe that we're definitely going to have you again on the show so that we can we, we can we can tap more from from, from this uh, amount of knowledge you have regarding this but before you leave us we would like you to do us a little favor it's just a culture here you are a spoken word artist that uses rap as your tool. I would like you to do something for us on live TV right here on Wazobia Max. Wow. Small intro, something soft, something small. It will be fine. We will we'll, we'll appreciate it. <laughs> Can you do that for us? <laughs> you know, something right. very little. It's your boy JR, live on TV yeah. on Wazobia Max. You people listening at home, I'm about to blow like a sax. I say I'm on the move. I got something to prove because this damn street is just flooded with dudes that want to break you up, put you in a position to tear you up. When a tech lift up, your neck get cut. Like Neo from the Matrix, I'm the chosen one. My pops is a soldier, so I'm a soldier, son. My flow's begun to penetrate the industry and grow and strong until the day that I overcome. Man, these rappers is gassed up, lost in transmission. They think platinum is the ultimate ambition, but I'm in the damn kitchen. That's how I throw an apron on, put a couple verses in the pot, and then cook a song. If you're listening, I tell you now, the streets thirst. Me versus the industry, I never spit a weak verse. It's a flawed system. You're coming up, my advice is stay on your toes and never get caught slipping. Oh, uh, that's it, it's your boy, JR. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That's what's you up. Know, I, that is that is that's, that, that's very amazing. Thank you very much for giving us that that little package, little freestyle. We appreciate your time today on the show. We're definitely going to bring you back on the show uh, one of these days to have more conversations yes. with you. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, you. It's Desire. Thank you very much for your time. God bless. To enjoy more of this, our Ogun get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.